Uh, our last speaker um, for this session before the pitches is uh, Aviatav Mohan, who is the uh, co-founder and CEO of Feelbit. Um, with over 20 years of experience in startups, um, prior to Feelbit, Aviatav founded one of the first SCADA software companies in the world. And um, it, actually, his first startup after uh, completing his uh, electrical engineering studies at the uh, Technion was Shevchevich, which is a, uh, to the Israelis, it will be uh, uh, quite familiar as a leading counter software. Uh, so, uh, get that. I've been on that one, and uh, thank you for the IA and Gil for uh, inviting me. Uh, <coughs> I would like to speak about uh, a little bit, but before, just introduce, you know, what is the, our business. Uh, and first, what is AR? What is the augmented reality? Uh, augmented reality, as most of you know, is uh, the ability to uh, augment digital information on top of uh, physical uh, uh, devices. And uh, why uh, it is so important? What are the, the implications? Uh, and, and the reason is that for the first time in the man, mankind history, uh, a, a 3D knowledge and 3D decision can be made by uh, this, uh, this uh, technology. And because until now, all data and all content <coughs> is 2D. Uh, the reason that it's become so, so popular today is uh, the appearance of uh, wearable technologies like smart glasses with billions of dollars are invested in the, these industries. Uh, and uh, for the field service, uh, field service um, operations, uh, augmented reality was known as very, very important, but only when the wearable came to the market, then it became uh, possible to use augmented reality in field service. Um, the field platform is actually uh, a platform, software platform, that uh, allows collaboration between field service technicians, experts, <coughs> customers, and uh, uh, suppliers. And uh, the reason that we are here uh, today is that uh, we would like to present one of our biggest uh, applications in the oil and gas industry. Uh, and uh, I would like to uh, call our CRO, uh, James Lamb, uh, that I'm very excited to uh, uh, present him and uh, continue the discussion. Thanks, Avitar. Um, I'm assuming I know how to. Okay, so that, that as, as Avitar said, the challenge here is to use augmented reality to maintain critical equipment. So we're, we're talking about those cases where something's already failed, unfortunately, to whatever extent. And the opportunity that other people have talked about this morning in, in, in context of the oil and gas industry is how do we. There's obviously been a lot of focus on getting more for your money, making all the dollars you spend drop down to the bottom line, especially going through the capitally constrained time that we've just been through. Um, it's true that the most profitable barrel of oil is one that's coming out of an existing field, a mature field. You don't have to do anything. You're just, everything's been spent and you're now making money off that. There's really two ways to think about how to do that. Um, one is to go through, you know, production, optimization, reworking fields, and installing more infrastructure, injecting water or whatever. That's expensive, but again, we're talking about a capitally constrained environment. So um, this is from a, a Bloomberg article. It's kind of summarizing executive comments, uh, which is an easier way or a cheaper way of doing it. It's often the key is simply to make sure that the fields pump every day and you're reducing downtime. So that's kind of where we come in. Um, have you tried to talk about this a little bit, and I want to give them a couple minutes at the end to summarize. Uh, so I won't go into too much detail about this, other than to say that it is augmented reality for wearables. Um, and I want to talk about a case study. This is a, a oil and gas customer. And, and what I like about this is I'm not waving my arms and saying, this is what could happen if you use this technology. This is all about what did happen when a company did use this technology. So this is a company who's very strange, kind of like all companies, uh, headcount reductions over the last little while, had 10,000 wells spanning over a couple different states in the, in the continental United States. Um, very few field technicians to actually monitor those, although they had the SCADA systems, complex automation control equipment, 
they could figure out was sometimes when something was wrong, but they didn't know exactly what it was. As a result, few people, they're driving long distances, which in and of itself has safety impl implications, having to go fix those problems, and most of the time they couldn't or didn't have the right skills to fix the problem, so it was something that they'd go figure out what the problem was, come back, tell somebody else, then get the right equipment or the right experts to get the problem fixed. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this. I'm not trying to educate everybody about the architecture, other than to say this is how a platform like Fieldbit can fit into a technical platform that a company will have in place. Uh, and instead of like talking about the middle part, I really just want to focus on the outside part, which is the user interface, where there, there's the technicians that's getting uh, deployed to a site because there's been a problem detected. Uh, we're collecting information from the sensors at that site uh, in real time and integrating that into our system so that when the technician gets there, he's looking through his or her cell phone or uh, smart glasses, they can see the actual pressures, chemistry, whatever's happening in those systems, and so can the experts. So together they can diagnose the problem much more quickly than they could otherwise have done. And once they've figured out what the problem is, they can fix it a lot more quickly because now instead of having to get the right technician to fix the problem, that technician essentially has access to all the information and all the expertise that the company has. They're sitting in a control room saying, yeah, this is how you fix this. They can uh, augment the technician with, with uh, augmented reality, with step-by-step -step instructions, schematics, video, whatever it takes to give that technician the skills to fix the problem that's available to him or her in real time. Um, and that's kind of how the system works. Now, this next, hopefully this works too, and you can hear the sound. This isn't quite as sexy and dramatic as the video that Gil showed earlier, but I think it really does get the point across. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have music. Hope we have audio. Maybe not. If you had audio, you'd hear some really great Oklahoma slash Texas accents talking to this guy through this. Um, yeah, you probably oh, pointed at your boots, your pants, and that, your shirt. Yeah. Yeah. So, right. Should be able to so I'm going to actually start this over again if I can. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think we're down the load. See your shirt. <coughs> yeah, your phone was pointed at your boots, your pants, and that, your shirt. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, should be able to fire back on now. We'll give it a second to boot up, and then I'll try to pull it a couple times, and it should be good. <coughs> Obviously not paid actors. These are real people doing their job. Uh, and what I also liked about it was that kind of the naturalness of it. You could see how he's talking to the person saying, I can see your shirt. You're, you're actually showing me your shirt right now. And that, that's subtle. And the subtle thing about it is that, that the system works. And so in other words, it's not like a bad conference call where they're talking over each other. They're actually interacting and having casual conversation and fixing the problem. And so that's what I really love about it. It doesn't have the dramatic music, but we can work on that. And this is actually from the company that we worked with. Uh, this is their slide, kind of a schematic about the before and after. So uh, whereas a problem would take a day to solve involving multiple trips to and fro, uh, now that same problem takes an hour to solve using this kind of technology. And to hit it home one more time, um, this is again the result of the implementation. A significant reduction in the people's travels, which has, again, safety implications. Uh, less miles on the road. The big money is decrease of production losses by 25%. So that will have an impact on your bottom line. 
And it has, came about as a result of implementing this technology, which also has organizational implications, changing the way the support structure work. Um, but ultimately, uh, over 200 technicians now are supplied with this technology out there in the field every day solving problems. So with that, 